do it. Hi, welcome back. So today it is another little module in requirements engineering and the principle we talk about is problem orientation versus solution orientation. So in requirements engineering, we know we want to develop a very first rough idea of what our solution is going to look like. However, we often take shortcuts or don't dig deep enough into the problem that we're trying to solve. And that has led to numerous software project failures in the past, software projects that have run over time and over budget simply because they did not take the time to really analyze the problem in depth. So when we develop a software system, we start on a very high level. We try to figure out who are the people that we even need to talk to. That's what we call the stakeholders. So we're going to start with the stakeholders. And then these stakeholders will have some kind of process that they're looking like, uh, sorry, that they're looking at, that they want to improve this piece. It's a business process. That business process can be something like ordering a book online, or it can be getting into a carpool system and ordering a carpool. Or it could be, I want that little robot that goes clean my house for me. Whatever it is. The third part that we need, that is already there, that we can analyze, are the other external systems. Sometimes these are connected, and sometimes they're just connected to my system under development. So here are the external systems. And all of this is the first layer. This is the so-called business process layer. And we're going to get to three layers today. The reason why we use these layers is that on every layer, we abstract from a problem. So right now, we're looking at the problem domain. We're looking at what is already there if I haven't even started thinking about my new future system. So I look at who are the people who I need to talk to that are there already. Maybe some of these people are also concerned with those systems over here, with the external systems. And I can look into those and see what, what is it that is currently in operation and what my system will have to work with in the future. And the third part is the business process, that these stakeholders want to improve by the system that we're developing. So that business process is already there without my system being yet in place, like some previous form of it. Like even, say, rewind a few years, there is not a single car sharing system on the market, but there were people figuring out how to get a ride together to, I don't know, carpool to work or to carpool to a concert in the evening. So the process idea is there. We want to develop a better solution for it. And what we abstract from on this level is the problem of how are we going to have that done by a system. Now for getting closer to what a solution may look like, we look at the usage process layer. And this means I start thinking about who are my future user groups? And in what way, in which ways will they be interacting with my future system? So this 
is my future system under development. But I will only look at that system black box. That means that I know my user will want to do a specific task with that system. Probably several of them. And then there may be another user group who is also interested in task two, but who is unlikely to ever perform task one. But they need a task three. Now to stick with that carpooling system, those two user groups may be users who have a car and users who do not have a car. So the user who has a car, they will want to be able to offer rides in their car in that system. And the user who does not have a car will want to post, I'm looking for a ride to San Francisco next Friday, and then see whether they can find a match. And task two is agree on a pickup time and date. That will be something that both of those users need access to. So on this level, we talk about what the interaction between the user groups and the system under development looks like. But we do not talk about what that looks like system internally. This is just a black box. We know what it does. We don't know yet how it's going to do that. The other part that we have to look at on this level is with what quality can we provide the service? So we're going to have the quality requirements. And maybe also a couple of system constraints. Oh, typo. You're supposed to be the other way around. OK. And both of these are subcategories of non-functional requirements. So the quality requirements say things like the database needs to respond within um, two seconds. The system should be highly reliable. And the system constraints, they make assurances about what we will need once we get to the next layer down here for the system to work as specified. So the final and third layer is the system layer. Some call it the technical system layer, so let's put that in parentheses. And this is where we say, well, how are we going to realize all of these tasks? So we're going to break down the tasks into logical components that will reside in that system. We have kind of a structure in here. So we have a component model. And we have, on a more detailed level, our system constraints and quality requirements refined and we will have a first idea of what hardware components we're going to need. So this is a logical component model and these are hardware components. So we already need, we will, uh, sorry, we already know we will need a physical database. We already know we will need a couple of sensors if we want to integrate that carpooling system with the online system and we will need something like a web server and then we'll need client interfaces. So that is on a very generic level the contents that we will be talking about. So we start here on a very abstract level talking about only the problem. We try to understand the problem better by talking to all the people involved, by looking at the process in detail that they want to improve, and by looking at the external systems that are already there. Once we have a really good understanding of what 
that problem looks like, we move on and design the user level. We ask ourselves, or ask the stakeholders, that's actually the better idea. So we start with asking ourselves as requirements engineers to come up with an early draft, and then we go back to the stakeholders and ask them, is this really what you need? What do you think about these proposals? Is that what you want your future user interaction to look like? And at the same time, we look at the quality requirements and some system constraints that may arise from them. Once we have that part done, I didn't tell you the problem yet, so the problem that we tackle on this layer is what does the user interaction look like? The problem we still abstract from is how is that going to be divided into hardware and software? So that's what we look at on the third layer. So here we're somewhere between problem orientation and solution orientation, and down here we finally get to complete solution orientation because we take these very rough early design ideas and put them into a logical component model that has the different functions in here. So to put that in the sketch as well, this one is problem oriented. And this one is somewhere in between. And this one down here is finally solution oriented. Why does this matter? It matters because I want you to take home the point that at the beginning we really want to dig into the problem analysis. As software engineers we tend to be solution driven people. So we hear about the problem and we're like, all right, I already got an idea, we're going to solve this and it's going to be really cool and you're going to love the user interface, let's get going, let's get, yeah. And that's exactly how we often end up developing a solution that is not a perfect fit for our customer. So instead, we need to rein ourselves in, we need to rein our enthusiasm in and take the time to talk to those stakeholders, to really question them in detail, to come back with early drafts often and then we're going to make sure we're on track and we develop the right thing on the first time. The same thing does apply for Agile. So I often get asked, well, this sounds like pretty documentation heavy and time intensive. Like, how do you th apply that to Agile? You use the same, the same thing. You just go in quicker iterations. So in Agile, you may spend two to three hours talking about this with your customer. You then go and work out these parts. In your next customer meeting, three to seven days later, you are going to present this and potentially a couple of first user interface mockups and a first logical design. And then you get feedback from the customer. If you develop a logical design for that, that means we're assuming that your customer does have a lot of technical knowledge. That may not be the case. You may just come back with a draft of this and you develop that in the background. So same is true for Agile, we just go in quicker iterations.